Good evening, everyone. A little bit of late breaking news. Normally, I wouldn't do a video at this time of night, but if I don't do it now, I'm not going to get to it until tomorrow afternoon. And by then, it'll just be too late. The news is that all hearings in Leah Remini's lawsuit against Scientology have been canceled and are now being rescheduled. That might sound alarming. Do not be alarmed. It does not mean there has been a settlement. It does not mean the lawsuit has been thrown out. What it means is that David Miscavige has gotten his way for now and that his request to have the judge on the case removed for uh, being unfair, being biased, being incapable of being fair to Scientology has actually been approved. And therefore, all of the hearings have to be vacated and rescheduled. And there's a whole bunch of papers that were uh, filed about this today. They're pretty interesting. They're not very long. I'm pulling up just a, a few uh, choice ones to share with you, all rather short. Here's the actual minute order from the judge today. We won't read the entire thing, but... Um, this court has reviewed and considered the peremptory challenge filed by defendant David Miscavige on March 26th. This court issued a minute order on April 2nd. I'm going to show you guys that minute order in just a minute here. This court issued a minute order on April 2nd concerning same. This court has now reviewed the briefing submitted by all parties directly related to the minute order of April 2nd. Defendant David Miscavige's peremptory challenge to the judge filed on March 26th is granted. All future dates in this case are advanced and vacated. The clerk is directed to cause this case to be reassigned to a new judicial officer as directed by the supervising judge of Civil Department 1. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. A couple couple other paragraphs after that. What I do want to show you is this minute order that he refers to pre, um, on March 20. No, no, no. On April 2nd that he previously issued. Uh, oh, oh, I see. You can't see that. I have to share it in a different way. Oh, very interesting. Okay. Give me a moment. We'll do it this way. All right. Let's do it this way. This is the previous minute order on this subject where the judge acknowledged that David Miscavige's peremptory challenge was filed on time and properly, and the judge even suggested that the order should be granted. But before he granted the order, he posed a bunch of questions, and he gave he asked each side to provide answers to these questions. And each side did provide answers to these questions. Uh I'm not going to show you all the answers because they're sort of moot. There's only one response that I am going to show you from David Miscavige and RTC, Religious Technology Center, the organization that David Miscavige controls, and CSI, the Church of Scientology. There's only one response from David Miscavige, RTC, and CSI that I'm going to show you. And it really does crack me up. And it really just goes to show the fraud that Scientology continues to get away with per 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 uh, perpetrating against the courts about David Miscavige's control of Scientology. These are the questions that the judge wanted people to weigh in on before he made a final ruling on this issue. One, the fact that this court has already ruled upon a special motion to strike, which may involve a contested fact determinations relating to the merits of the trial, does this prevent defendant David Miscavige's peremptory challenge at this time? Two, does the fact that defendant David Miscavige is the de facto leader and or CEO of the corporate defendants prevent him from filing this peremptory challenge in his individual capacity at this time? Okay, I forgot to put my phone on do not disturb. So here we go. Three, does the fact that David Miscavige sought relief in his individual capacity by filing a motion to quash for this court to hear prevent his current peremptory challenge at this time? Four, does the fact that subsequent to the filing of his peremptory challenge, he filed a joint stipulation for this court's signature and order on March 29th, requesting an extension for his time to file a responsive pleading, affect his right to exercise a peremptory challenge at this time? Five, does the subsequent filing of a notice of appeal by the corporate defendants in regard to this court's ruling of the special motion to strike have any impact on the pending peremptory challenge, either jurisdictional or otherwise? All righty then. 
let's take a look at the only response all of the defendants thought was necessary. First, we'll pull up David Miscavige's response. David Miscavige's brief. Here we go. And, uh, okay, let's share this one. Uh, Defendant David Miscavige is brief in response to the court's April 2nd minute order regarding Mr. Miscavige's peremptory challenge to judicial officer pursuant to blah, blah, blah. All right, here we go. Come on, how come I can't get this to properly scroll for me? There we go. Okay, now he does respond. David Miscavige is actually the only party that responded to every question the judge just asked. We are not going to get into all of these responses. There's only one where he basically takes issue with the judge calling him the de facto CEO leader of Scientology, which any Scientologist in the world would tell you that David Miscavige is the CEO de facto leader of Scientology. They might correct your language. They might mean, oh, do, do you mean chairman of the board? But if you asked any Scientologist in the world whether David Miscavige in his capacity as chairman of the board, RTC, is effectively the CEO and de facto leader of Scientology, they would 100% of the time tell you that the answer is yes. Here's what Mr. David Miscavige had to say about that. Uh, Mr. Miscavige is the chairman of the board of RTC. He is not the CEO or any other officer of RTC. He is not the CEO or any other officer, director, or employee of CSI. RTC and CSI are separate and distinct nonprofit religious corporations, so recognized by the IRS after a most thorough and searching review. Accordingly, the court's assumption that Mr. Miscavige is de facto leader and or CEO of the corporate defendants is incorrect, but the assumption does not matter, and then they go on to make their actual argument. It's interesting uh, David Miscavige is called, known as the chairman of the board of RTC. You would think if R the RTC was a corporation that it would have um, a board and a CEO. Uh, there is no CEO of RTC. There is no one who runs RTC other than David Miscavige. So for Scientology to try to make a distinction between whether he's the chairman of the board or uh, the CEO of the company is silly to anyone in Scientology, but to a judge, the judge has to sort of take their argument on its face because how would the judge know any better? Now, I believe Warren McShane is someone who is called the president of RTC, but don't be confused. The president of RTC doesn't mean Warren McShane runs RTC. Uh, it, it, it's like if someone's the president of Disney, it doesn't make them the CEO of Disney. It doesn't make them the chairman of the board of Disney. It's just a position that has, I, I, I honestly you know, don't know what the, the president of corporations uh, does. But uh, this is something that, it's so frustrating to former Scientologists because former Scientologists have the same understanding that current, current Scientologists have. Here's what makes it most frustrating. This isn't even one of those things that Scientologists would lie about. This isn't even one of those things. Any Scientologist in the world would readily admit to you that David Miscavige runs Scientology. They wouldn't even think it's a controversial thing. That's not even something they would be like, oh, shh, we only say that when no one's listening. Scientologists think it's amazing that David Miscavige is the leader of Scientology. They wouldn't even know that it's something they're not supposed to admit to the authorities. That's what makes it so frustrating. Okay. Now, if I look at, uh, let's see here. Let me close that one out. Let's look at RTC's response to the minute order. This is quite literally the only thing RTC cared about, which is, spoiler alert, uh, the same thing we just covered, which just cracks me up, you guys. Okay, let's share this again. Mm, there we go. Uh, and let's see, is this, let's, let's jump to the bottom. Who is it that's actually representing RTC? Is it Jeff Mangles? No, it's Matt Hanks. 
Okay, it's Matt Hanks. Um, RTC, again, guys, the organization, the corporation that David Miscavige controls as the chairman of the board, RTC. <laughs> okay. The minute order states, does the fact that David Miscavige is the de facto leader and or CEO of the corporate defendants prevent him from filing his this peremptory challenge in his individual capacity at this time, RTC objects to the premise of the court's question, good sir. It is not a fact that David Miscavige is the de facto leader and or CEO of the corporate defendants. Plaintiff, that's Leah Remini, alleges in her complaint that David Miscavige is the de facto leader of the other named defendants. But that is just a false and unproven allegation. To be clear, Religious Technology Center, a church of the Scientology religion, is a distinct nonprofit corporation within Scientology, recognized as such by the IRS with its own officers, staff, and board of directors. RTC holds the ultimate ecclesiastical authority regarding the standard application of Scientology's religious technologies and is the final arbiter of Scientology orthodoxy. RTC is not part of the management structure of the church and is not involved in its day-to-day -day affairs. As set forth above, David Miscavige is the chairman of the board of directors of Religious Technology Center. Further, David Miscavige is not even the CEO of RTC. There is nothing in the record before this court alleging or even suggesting that Mr. Miscavige serves as the CEO of any entity. Yes, that is by design, which is what the RICO statutes are for. <laughs> the statement appears for the first time in the minute order, and it is incorrect. All righty. So that's David Miscavige's response. That's RTC's response. And for the last one, let's look at the Church of Scientology International's response. Um, I think you guys can guess what you are about to see. CSI's response to the minute order. <laughs> this is literally their only response. <clears throat> Oh, Lord. On April 2nd, the court issued a minute order inviting the parties to submit a brief on certain questions posed by uh, the court concerning Defendant David Miscavige's challenge. Defendant Church of Scientology International responds only to correct the court's apparent misunderstanding regarding its relation to Defendant David Miscavige. Mr. Miscavige is not CEO of the Church of Scientology International. He is neither an officer nor a director of the Church of Scientology International. He holds no position with the Church of Scientology International. Mr. Miscavige is chairman of the board of directors of Defendant Religious Technology Center. RTC and CSI are separate tax-exempt nonprofit religious corporations. CSI has no overlapping officers or directors with RTC. There you go, guys. David Miscavige, never heard of him. He doesn't work here. He's got nothing to do with us. <laughs> oh boy oh boy oh boy anyway the truth is this particular argument that they're making doesn't actually really have anything to do with the issue that the judge is ruling on so it's it was i mean yeah okay the the judge asked a bunch of questions he just wanted feedback on it these responses from scientology pretending david miscavige doesn't control scientology didn't actually weigh the, affect the judge's decision on this matter. The judge already said in his first minute order that he actually believed the request um, to reassign the case to a new judge should be approved. This was really kind of a formality. But it is interesting and I think a little instructive to see that this is Scientology's position. David Miscavige, what? Controlling Scientology? Good sir. I'm offended at the implication. Oh boy, any one of these judges, and I know it might they might not even be allowed to do something like this, but any one of these judges should just listen to the three hours of audio of the uh, New Year's Eve event that David Miscavige hosted for all of Scientology uh, in December, and then the L. Ron Hubbard annual birthday celebration event that David Miscavige hosted uh, last month for all Scientologists in the world, and just listen. Is this the de facto leader of Scientology? The answer is yes. 
And one of these days, a court is actually going to make a ruling. And um, that would be a good day. Uh, all right, guys, that is it. Um, thank you guys for joining me on a video that's so late. Uh-oh, Jane Post says, hopefully Aaron gets his pearls out for this one. I should have gotten the pearls out for this one. I did earlier today, I was doing a video where I wanted to get out my Grant Cardone hat and my Grant Cardone hat was all the way over there in a suitcase. And I did get up and run over there and leave this chair vacant, dead air, you guys, just to get this hat. I'm just not willing to do that for the pearls. But tomorrow I'll get those pearls and I'll put them right here and I will have them ready next time. <laughs> okay, Jane Post then says, so no more judge changes. Each side has requested a judge changed. Is that correct? To my understanding, no more judge changes, but I guess we'll see. Uh, let's see. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Funny Hat Blue gifted one channel membership. Thank you so much, Funny Blue. That's uh, that's very generous of you. Tori Chrisman is in the chat. Are you there, Tori? Tori, I don't look at the live chat. Um, oh, here we go. Tori Magoo. Just like Miscavige saying, Tori who? Now, Dave who? <laughs> Good to see you, Tori. Thank you for uh, watching and jumping into the live chat. Um, open source advocate. It doesn't matter. Board chairs supersede the CEO. Therefore, the responsibilities of a CEO, if one is not present, defaults to the chairman of the board. That's an excellent, um, that's an excellent, excellent point. I have, I'm not aware of any instances where Scientology has had to make an argument for who actually runs RTC. If they're claiming it's not David Miscavige, I I've seen them call Warren McShane, the president, but I've never seen them claim that the president actually runs RTC. Oh my God. I take it back. I think there was a declaration in this case where Warren McShane claimed he ran the day-to-day -day affairs of RTC. Oh my God. Oh, there's no way for a judge to know that's not true. It's laughable. It's laughable. Scientologists don't even know who Warren McShane is. <laughs> I swear to God, out of 30,000 Scientologists, the only people who would know who Warren McShane is are the people who actually work with him in the Sea Org at the super secret, ultra confidential base out in uh, Hemet, California, or uh, north of Hemet in Riverside County, uh, California. Warren McShane has never spoken at a Scientology event. There's never been a video sent out to Scientologists to watch of Warren McShane. I swear to God, if there's 10,000, if there's 30,000 Scientologists in the world, maybe a hundred or 200 people have any idea who Warren McShane is, have ever heard of him or seen him. And those aren't the public Scientologists. They're the Sea Org members who actually worked with him. Okay. I mean, over the last 20 or 30 years, maybe one or 2,000 Sea Org members know who Warren McShane is. I think at the international base, at the most, there were 700 to 1,000 people working there. And there is a little bit of a, of a revolving door up there, but it doesn't revolve that quickly. So maybe 1,500 Scientologists in the history of the Galactic Federation have ever known who Warren McShane is. But this is the guy who runs the day-to-day -day affairs of the corporation that controls Scientology. I don't think so. But how would a judge know? A judge would never know. Um, uh, Matt Elliott, MAA, SPTV Canada. I've heard that about McShane in the past, but he is like the granddad who retired, but still comes into the office every day. Um, Warren McShane is the guy that Mike Rinder has said, direct quote from David Miscavige. The only reason, Warren McShane, uh, that the only reason David Miscavige keeps Warren McShane around is because he's the best liar. David Miscavige has ever known. Claire Hadley has mentioned that Warren McShane's got a little bit of an addiction to the pornography. It's uh, something David Miscavige likes to embarrass him with, but he keeps Warren around because Warren is the best liar David Miscavige knows, and so he's handy to keep around. There you go. That's Warren. Scientologists don't know him, but David Miscavige found a use for him. All right, guys, that's it. So um, there is another, uh, there was another order here. Let me see. There was another order here saying what the next hearing 
Um, because remember, this case was as a point was at a point where Leah Remini had filed a motion requesting leave to amend her complaint and file a second amended complaint. There is still a hearing that's going to be held on that. That hearing's been vacated, rescheduled. I think it was like May 9th or May 15th was the next hearing. Let me see if I can very quickly find it. Order that that's a this minute order. Is that it? Is that it? Nope, that's not it. And I don't want to spend too much time looking at it. There isn't the, the judge has basically here's the problem. There was a minute order that I didn't totally understand because it seemed like the um why can't I find this thing? Damn it. Minute order order granting stipulation. Okay, please tell me is this it? Is this it? Here we go. Here we go. Let me share this with you guys just so you can see it for yourself. Having read and considered the party's joint stipulation regarding hearing on plaintiffs, that's Leah Remini's, motion for leave to amend the first amended complaint, it is hereby ordered that the hearing on the motion is continued from April 18th to May 9th. That's hilarious because May 9th is the anniversary of Dianetics. May 9th is Dianetics Day. So I guess what I'm, but here's the part of this that I'm confused about. How can this judge reschedule that hearing for that date if he's not the judge on the case anymore? So that's what I'm a little confused about. Um, I'll get that clarified. And when I understand that part better, I'll do an update video. Other than that, guys, thank you for joining me. Thank you for hanging out this evening. Thank you, as always, to everyone who watches until the very end. And I'll talk to you soon. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see an, a different one of my videos, uh, oh, dance, mama, then you could click right inside here. If you have subscribed or not, subscribe right here.